Hey, this is Caleb By. Thanks for joining us here, Millennial Z, as we take a look at the Lord of the Rings Online and how to use plugins. Uh, so the game has plugins uh, that allow you to do uh, different things with the UI and a few other tricks uh, and tips as well um, that uh, kind of enhance the game and give you uh, just a, a little bit more of a customized feel. Uh, to download or to use those plugins, uh, you're going to want to go to Lotro Interface. Okay, so Lotro Interface is really the, the place to pick up plugins. Um, it has a, a search bar up here where you can look for ones specifically. Uh, one of my favorites is Palantir. And we have the third version of Palantir out. Uh, so, uh, you know, they have a brief description here, some instructions as well. Uh, but what I found is that a lot of the instructions are actually uh, a bit outdated. All right, so what you're going to want to do is download. You'll see the download button over here. Uh, you're going to download that uh, <clears throat> that plugin, and then uh, you're going to unzip it to a folder here called plugins. So this is in your documents. You have the Lord of the Rings online. You're going to have to create this folder. Okay. This is not uh, a folder that's normally there. So you're going to create the plugins folder, uh, and then you're going to unzip your download, extract all into plugins. Okay, and uh, so you'll have a master fo folder. You'll have different folders within this one as well. All right. Once you uh, get that done, you'll be able to load these into the game, um, but it has to be done after. Um, uh, you have to be logged out of the game. Uh, the game has to be closed uh, and then reopened for these to, to take effect. So if you have the game closed while you're unzipping them and then you open the game, you're good to go. But if you have the game running, you're going to want to close it and then jump back in here. Um, now, what they've done uh, to make life a bit easier is, one, you just have to put, in the, put it into the plugins folder, uh, which is a big help. Um, <clears throat> But two, if you look at the instructions here, man, there's just a lot. Uh, there was a handful of things that you've got to do. And originally I was following these and it just kind of got to be a bit of a pain and a bit obnoxious. And just kind of, you know, just, just a bit too much. So as I went through that, I realized I did not have to do that. I'm going to put this uh, link in the description. This gives you a better list of what you need to do. This is updated, uh, and you're able to very, very quickly get these in. Like I showed you, just unzip them into the um, into the plugins folder in your documents and under Lord of the Rings Online. And then once you're in the game, loading them is actually relatively simple uh, as well. All right, so let's take a look at that real quick. So once you're in the game and you've got those unzipped to the folders that you want, uh, you'll click this menu button over here, okay, off to the left. You'll bring up this bar, go up to the top where it says System, scroll over, you'll see Plugin Manager, and go ahead and open that. And this is just extremely helpful. So what you have is uh, all of your plugins that are loaded in there will load here. I have three that I've settled on that I actually like and want to use. Um, I have Alt Inventory. Uh, so what you'll do is, is uh, load these up by clicking Load and that will load them for your specific character. Also over here you can have an automatic, lo an au an automatic load option. So uh, all characters right now are selected so as soon as I open up something I will get uh, any character I'll get my Alt Inventory. Uh, so what is all inventory? Well, down here in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see it's kind of hidden. Um, but all inventory is pretty awesome, and it lets you see any character that you've logged in will show up on this list, and it lets you see what's in your alt's inventory. Uh, right now, nothing is showing up for any of my alts because I haven't logged in since I've downloaded this. So I just have to log out, log into those characters, and it will automatically update this for me. So that's very useful if you're crafting a lot or you're doing something for kins and uh, you know you're trying to remember how many whatever hides that you have uh, this will let you see that. So very very useful. 
All right, so in your plugin manager, not only do you have the option to automatically load it or to load or unload, but also you have, you have the options within, uh, within itself as well. So let's take a look at the second one, your combat analysis. This is really great if you uh, want to track how you're doing. Uh, we have damage uh, dealt, damage taken, and we have the, the outgoing healing and power. And so what this will do is it will uh, keep track of all of those things that are happening. You can, uh, you can see what your damage per second is averaging out to be. You can track it per fight, which is nice, or just overall per run, uh, which, is, which is very helpful as well. And uh, it's, it's nice because it has this really nice hidden button. Okay, so it's going, it's doing its thing, right? Um, I don't necessarily have to see it all the time, though. I can close it. And this is a good example of one that has options within it. So you can go here and choose, you know, font sizes, among other things. There's a lot of options in here. I'll let you get in and, and kind of figure those out. Uh, but it's a, it's a very impressive and very handy plugin. And again, the last one is Palantir. Um, I really enjoyed Palantir. Um, this is probably one of the most helpful. It only pops up during combat. And what happens is... Uh, here, I'll go ahead and show the options here. And this actually brings up a nice options panel. Um, you'll see that my character has, go up against the wall, uh, my character has the health bar and the power bar front and center in the screen. What's really nice is that I'm no longer looking up in the left-hand corner. Of course, you can, you can opt to drag this down in your UI, um, but then it's always there. This is nice because there's an option um, show only in combat. So right now that's checked. So this goes away. So this is going to go away when I'm not in combat. That's that's pretty cool. Um, it's not cluttering up my my screen. Uh, so what it does is it shows my health, my power, but also down here, uh, if I have a uh, bleeding effect, it's going to show a red, and and I can opt to drag my pots here and right click them to use them. Um, so same thing with the shadow and the disease and the poison so it's going to pop all these up that will light up when my character has that effect and then I know then to go ahead and, and activate and use that pot to get rid of that effect so very handy for combat raids um, really anything that you're doing um, it's just quicker less distracting and uh, more more information over uh, more information and less information right so if you look up here, you're going to have just this long list of buffs usually in a good run, especially if you have a captain. That can get really frustrating trying to watch the things that you know you need to know, and this this will help that. Um, the options have the options have a lot of customization as far as the bar opacity, uh, spacing. I can space them out, bring them close together. Text, kind of the same thing, make it lighter. Um, same thing with color. I can change my morale color, right? Make it red if I wanted to. Um, not sure why. We'll revert back to that normal default, um, but pretty cool. And you can get in here and really do a lot of customization on that as well. All right, so that is how you use uh, plugins within Lord of the Rings Online. So again, to, to recap, you're going to go to load your interface, uh, download your plugin. You create the folder plugins within uh, your documents and the Lord of the Rings Online. Uh, you're going to unzip the contents of your uh, plugin into that folder. Uh, and then once you're in game, you're able to go to your plugin, uh, your plugin manager, and you can manage those from there. Have them load automatically, which is pretty slick uh, for the ones that you know you're going to be using all the time. You can choose which characters to load them in, which characters not to, or just do all characters. And then, of course, you have the options as well. So relatively straightforward. Um, some plugins really are kind of a, a pain to me. They're too much. Some plugins are really useful. I like to keep it simple, um, and I like to keep it efficient. So uh, in the comments, here's what I want to know. What plugins are your favorite? What do they do? And, of course, if you're going to mention them, uh, be extra helpful and uh, drop a link. That'd be great. 
All right, so we're going to keep it short tonight. Uh, hopefully uh, that answered some questions to those of you who are thinking about using plugins. And again, it's, it actually is very easy. Um, if you found the video helpful, if you liked it, give it a like. That lets me know what kind of content uh, you guys are most, most interested in, and I can focus my videos towards that. Um, obviously, you know, subscribing is going to let you know. I'm, I'm starting a, um, a stint of uh, vacation and holiday here, so I'll be doing multiple videos, and uh, that subscribe button is going to give you the option to get those notifications so you can see the next video that we put out. All right, uh, I will look forward to seeing you in Middle Earth.